In today's video, we're going to do a little tool test and review, and uh, it's something I'm pretty excited about. It's something I've wanted for a long time. So this is an endoscope or a bore scope. Um, it's a pretty neat little tool. I've always wanted one. I've had times I wish I had one, um, and now I do. So let's unbox this and see what we think. This particular unit is by DXZ Taws uh, Tools. They are on Amazon. They have a lot of cool different options. Um, and this one is currently on sale. And uh, I'm pretty excited to uh, look inside some things. So let's go. The box is pretty nice. It arrived safely. And within the box, we have a nice little storage case. It's kind of a fabric case that's got a hard inside. Let's see what the unit itself looks like. Cool. Little strap. Little screen. Got some accessories. Pretty cool. Ooh, very long. Man, this thing, you could do some uh, exploring with this thing. And one of the most exciting features, check that out. This thing is steerable. So once you get it in, where you're going, you can uh, look around and it does a uh, complete 180. So very cool, check that out. So here's the screen, this clips onto the wand I was just holding there. Uh, looks nice, has a lock button on it. Looks like USB-C and I can already see it has a micro SD card included, 32 gigabyte. Uh, so that's one less thing you have to buy. That's really nice. So I'm guessing you can store uh, images or videos that you take uh, when using this. So I'm going to plug it in, get it charged up, and we'll go from there. While the screen is charging, I'm just going to pop open this uh, pouch and see what else the kit comes with. Looks like a little lens cleaning brush. Okay, it does come with a USB-C. I just plugged it into my power bank out here in the shop, but you get an extra cord. Uh, looks like some really little cleaning swabs, optical lens cleaning swabs. Little dust-free cloth, bunch of wipes. It's like five or six of them. And let's see what's in here. Uh, okay, so there's a mirror. These are little attachments. So I'm guessing this is so you don't bang it into stuff. Probably little uh, protectors. And then this looks like a mirror. So if you can't see what you need to see, even with the uh, steerable head, you can pop that little fella on there. In addition to those items, looks like we get a card uh, that has some support information and a user manual. I'm sure this is all available online as well, but Pretty simple breakdown of how to attach the screen and some of the buttons on the unit itself and what they do. So it doesn't look over complicated. It's in English. I think we'll be able to figure it out. The unit actually came with a pretty good charge, but I did uh, plug it in for a while. So we're all ready to roll. It looks uh, super simple. So I think you just slide it in there until that's flush and then flip it over. And now it's locked and good to go. Let's fire it up. Ooh, but first we gotta do the ever so satisfying. Oh yeah, that peel was nice. So I think you just hold on the power button here. Cool, so that's about as uh, dummy proof as you can get. As soon as you hit the power on button, this thing lights up. There's the camera, there's the Jeep. Cool. So uh, it appears as though a bright LED comes on right out of the gate. Picture quality looks good. There's my finger. So let's try the steering. Oh yeah. Ooh, there's my hairy knuckle. Man, up close focus. Look at my cuticles. They need a little work. <laughs> but uh, that's pretty neat. So you just spin this knob and you can uh, rotate it and see whatever you want to see. So it looks like on the wand here we have some buttons that adjust the brightness. So it looks like it has off, high, and a couple different brightness settings. 
Oh, snap a picture right there. Oh, it even has a zoom. So you can zoom in if you can't get quite close enough. Very cool. So this little picture function over here, if you've taken images, it uh, opens up the menu to cycle through them. I only took one image, and then you hit it again, and it goes back to uh, picture mode. Okay, so if you hold on this button, it takes you to all the settings. Buttons feel good, so you can change the res resolution. Okay, and this is just a return button. So it has the date and the time down there. Looks like we'll have to set that. And, uh, but if you just want to plug it in, turn it on, and look at stuff, it's pretty much ready to go right out of the box. So enough fooling around with that. Let's go look inside something. One last thing I wanted to check before we actually use it is the diameter of the camera. Uh, the main thing I would like this for is to be able to pop out a spark plug or a glow plug and inspect uh, cylinder bores. So being small is important, but it also needs to be big enough to, be big enough to have uh, a good camera and lighting capability, which it does. And it measures uh, 338 thousandths in diameter. So a little bigger than a quarter inch and a little smaller than a three eighths hole. So this would safely fit through a 3 8 bore. It'd be a little snug, but it would go in. And then the actual cord itself is a little smaller. So once you get past the camera and this little collar, um, we're down to about 318 thousandths. So uh, it's pretty small package considering it's steerable, has an LED and a uh, pretty high quality camera. So. Um, that might help you in deciding whether or not this would be good for you. So getting in the drain plug of a transmission or axle would be no problem. And spark plug hole, obviously a piece of cake. And I think this is even small enough to get in most glow plug holes um, for diesel engine inspection. It just so happens that I have a new project here at the Red Eye Garage that I haven't even touched yet. I unloaded it and it's just been sitting here waiting for a video. So you guys probably haven't even seen this yet. Uh, this is an old Farmall um, PTO power unit, and I don't know anything about it other than that it does turn over, but I think it'll be a perfect candidate to try out the new camera. So I'm going to pop out a spark plug, and we'll put it in there and uh, check out the cylinder bores. I got this very cheap, and it's very old, so I'm not expecting um, <laughs> the cylinders to be pristine, but it'll kind of give us a good idea about what's going on inside. I'm just going to randomly pick a cylinder. Let's go with number two. I have had the plugs out uh, to put a little oil in there because uh, there was a, a little bit of a tight spot in one of the cylinders. So there's probably a little bit of a rust ridge. I think this thing has sat for quite some time, but you won't really know until you look inside. So I'm going to make sure that piston's all the way down and put the camera in and see what we can see. So I'm just going to turn it over. I think that cylinder's all the way down there. It'll give us a good view. Might be a little hard for you to see the screen out here, um, but we'll, I'll try to, I'll take some pictures while I'm in there too. So I don't have anything on the end right now, so I'm gonna be careful to not jam it into the um, cylinder wall, um, but I wanted to try it without any of uh, the caps on the end. So the light is on, full blast, and I'm gonna just kind of thread it in the cylinder. And yeah, let's see what's inside there. Ooh, I see some, some oil. There we go. So hopefully you can see that. I'll take some pictures. Let's try, oops, I just accidentally took a picture. Let's steer it around a little bit. Okay, so there's the top of the piston. There's a little rust ridge. I don't know if you can see that. I'm sorry it's so bright out here but definitely has a nice clear picture. The bright light is super helpful because without that, it'd be very dark in there. So there you can see the, some of the oil I put in there mixed with some of the rust and a little ring ridge. I'm using the 
the knob on the side to steer it. You can see where the cylinder head uh, comes down over the front. And we can roll it around. It'd be great to inspect the, you know, the upper ridge on these old pistons. They're prone to uh, cracking and losing chunks, but overall, this, the camera's working great and the cylinders actually look pretty good. So, cool, let's check uh, something else. For the next test, I'm gonna come inside the shop. It might be easier for you to see. And this is an engine in my current project, and I know it's a good runner, but I've never, uh, you know, scoped the bore. So I'm gonna pull out one of the plugs. This engine was just running a minute ago, so it's a little warm, but I don't think it's hot enough to uh, cause any problems. I'm gonna turn off my camera light so that you can see the screen a little bit better. All right, so here we are going in. Just uh, the, the camera quality is great. I can see every little burr on the threads, a little bit of oil residue, and just pop that bad boy in there. All right, now let's steer around. Oh, look at that, you can even see the smoke. Is that showing up on the camera there? So there's the top of the piston. And that little nick mark there is not um, a break. That's the, the little uh, machine dimple there. To, on a, it's a piston marking. And you can see uh, where there was some corrosion, some age. These, this is a standard bore. Oop, there's still some crosshatch on there, so I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to take a picture of that. So I just snapped a picture and I can overlay that on this video so you can see a little bit better. And now let's, I'm going to put it down in a little deeper and do the 180 with the uh, steerable. Oh, there you can see the, that's pretty cool. You can see the, the hose or the camera cable. And now we can see the valves. So by going all the way in like that, and turning it 180 degrees with the steering feature. Sorry, this is a little challenging to record. And having this engine running probably wasn't the best idea because of the smoke is making it, or the you know the evaporation or condensation, whatever that is. I'm trying to get you guys a good view of the valves. Let's check out something a little different. Here's a transfer case. Um, that I've never had a part, just kind of laying on the floor in my shop. So I'm gonna go in a drain plug and we'll take a look at the gears. Um, so this is another uh, easily accessible opening. I'm gonna kind of straighten this out. This is a little more snug inside because of the gears being right there. So there's a gear tooth. I can see right as I open it up, because of how close the gear is to the opening of the um, drain plug, I really can't get in there very far. So I'm just barely in the opening, but I'm able to um, steer and see some of the gears and other components to inspect them. So I could, uh, you know, with the light that's on there, you can really get a good look at stuff. Look how clear that picture is. So I'll snap a little shot there and um, you know, you can definitely see better than you could with your naked eye just by looking in there and the light makes all the difference. So, um, and we could pop the PTO cover off this and fish it in there even deeper if we needed to. I think I'm gonna find myself just uh, snaking everything. It's fun to just look in stuff. So I see another Willys engine here with the thermostat or the uh, temperature gauge uh, fitting out of it. So let's sneak inside this cylinder head and take a look. I think my favorite feature of this is that you just turn it on, boom, and it's working. No menus to go through, no settings. Uh, just set it how you want. Just set it and forget it. So let's take a peek inside this uh, crusty cylinder head. So I'm not really sure why you would need to do this, but it's just an example of another small hole. So I'm gonna sneak around the corner. Yeah, look at all that junk. So you can look at the water jacket, water passages. 
Uh, you could check for cracks or build up. This is, I know it looks terrible, but this is totally normal for an old cast iron head from the, uh, probably the 50s. And, uh, you know, right here you could uh, kind of steer it and just work your way back in through there. I think this thing could be really handy for marketplace adventures where you really want to inspect stuff before you make that financial commitment. So I'm going to try this fuel tank. So let's stick it in there. And now, especially a big open space like this, I know it's hard to see, I'm sorry, but you can really look around the entire thing. So there, I'm looking back up at the, uh, the fuel cap opening and I can move this wherever I need to and I could inspect this entire fuel tank for rust or debris or just anything you want to see. So there's one of the bungs for, you know, it's a drain plug or the fuel pickup. You can just really uh, get a good look at things you normally wouldn't be able to see with your naked eye. Let's go out to the pile and uh, now I'm just doing it for fun. <laughs> so I'm going to pop a drain cover on a differential and snake it in there and see if I can see, uh, you know, chunks or oil, water, anything like that, just to get an idea of what's going on inside. So if you're at a swap meet or a marketplace deal and you're about to drop 200 bucks on an axle and you want to make sure that the gears are okay and it's not full of water, thread this bad boy in there. There you have it. That's my review of the DXE Taws bore scope endoscope thingy with steerable head. Um, even if you're not a mechanic, uh, there's, I mean, I'm going to use this thing all around the house as well. It'd work great for uh, inspecting plumbing, looking for blockages, if you're fishing wires, um, if your kid lost that hamster and you want to go <laughs> down in the wall or behind the heater. Um, it's got about a, I would say, six foot lead, so you could really get back in those places. At the time this video is posted, this item is on sale. I think it's 21% off on Amazon right now. The link is down below. Feel free to ask any, for any comments. If you have any requests of something you'd like me to scope, please put them in the comments as well. And as always, thanks for watching. See you later.